Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Everlasting Summer. We're back here again. Here's the doobly-doo explaining they're all legal. Uh, don't get offended, but it's just a game, etc., etc. Anyways, let's, as I tap the mic stand, sorry. And also, as you can tell, I am am fighting a cold, so forgive me. Uh, at least I sound a lot better than I did in the shark video, or the ones before that. Anyways, let's go ahead and... Uh, Let's start where we left off, at the start of day two, where we've essentially met everyone. Well, everyone, quote unquote. There's a big camp, yet we've only met the hot chicks and a small girl, who is apparently over the age of 18 still. Anyways, I was having a dream. It seems, it seemed like I was in a some kind of vacuum with nothing but nothing around me. Nothing but nothing. Technically, proper English. But, not only around, I was the only creature in the universe. As if the universe has returned to a state of a singularity right before the Big Bang. And something was just about to happen. Hopefully it was me getting banged. Or me banging some. Ah, I messed that one up. So, let's move on. Suddenly, I heard a voice. Dude, wake up! It was my roommate. Apparently I slept in a missed class. Anyways. I could not make out the words, but I, it sounded familiar. Daryl. Anyways, the voice was whispering something gently. <laughs> gently. Come to my place, big boy. Anyways, and soothing to me. Then I realized it was the voice of that strange girl on the bus. The girl from the dream. But why is she trying to tell me? What is she trying to tell me? Who is she? And what does she have to do with this whole camp scenario? All right, so we're back in our room. We slept in the same one as the sexy 25-year-old uh, counselor. Mm. I'm finally drinking whiskey again because I'm feeling that much better. Can't hear it in my voice, but I feel great. Because I woke up on the right side of the bed. Her bed. Anyways, though. Bright sunlight struck my eyes. It was almost noon. Wow, nice. After stretching lazily on the bed and yawning, I started to recall the previous day. By the way, in these kind of camps, don't they wake you up like early in the morning? In a few seconds, all its all uh, yeah, all its events b before my eyes, the basket camp, the in local inhabitants. There, I have a sign somewhere around here that I've talked about, or a little poster, saying my favorite part of the day is the five seconds in the morning when I wake up and I don't know who I am. No, that's just wrong. Not the whole situation, not me being here. It was wrong by default. My attitude towards what was happening was wrong. I was just cool with it. Then again, you know, I'm now a teenager plopped around other sexy teenagers. I mean, why would I be happy about that? Because yesterday I fell asleep here, just like that. And before that, I chatted nicely with a local pioneer, even managed to crack a few jokes. How could I act? like that in such a situation. I should be frightened, startled by every little rushing, by every little rushling, should avoid all contact with potential hostile creatures. You slept next to one, by the way. She was over here with the bra was. Last night events were getting hazy, like a hangover. This really feels like the morning after a heavy drinking party. I know the feeling. Yesterday's natural, flawless, absolutely normal conduct becomes a nightmare in the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Divine Comedy. Was it? There's several nights, was it? I, pa I remember one time when I blacked out. I was on top of a bar in a Mexican restaurant dancing with a bunch of girls who were more interested in dancing with each other than me, wearing a sombrero way too tight, dancing God knows how awful. Anyways, I still don't know how I got off that bar, but apparently I didn't get arrested, so yay. Yes, it's just like that. And I can't change the past. Well, you time traveled from what I can tell so far. Then again, I had probably asserted the situation was acting accordingly. I glared, I glanced around, trying to figure out what, uh, whether I had been thrown somewhere else, but Olga cabin looked the same as yesterday. Everything seemed to be in its place, except a pioneer uniform which was hanging at the bedhead. I fumbled with it 
Uh, I, excuse me, I fumble with it in a distrust and tried it on. At least this is better than walking around in winter clothes. Yeah, trust me, it's got warm here in town. So it's almost spring light. It's actually 80 something degrees Fahrenheit. Wish I could see myself, but I like, uh, bet I look like a clown. Isn't there a mirror right here? Hmm. Ah, and for that, I need a mirror right here. At least a tiny, uh, right here, about the size of a small, small person. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it, yeah, okay. Gasp. Holy, I look at the newfound Pioneer Unifer and jump in surprise. Hold on. Okay, you didn't hear that, but I actually jumped backwards. There was some teenager on the other side of the mirror. He resembled me, but wasn't me. Where did uh, the weak stubble go? Speaking of which, I do need a shave. Man, that's getting bad. Uh, where were the bags under my eyes? A sloth. The deadly figure on my face. What, a teardrop? Did you kill a man in prison? It should. It seemed that I had not been thrown back in time or into a parallel reality. But instead, simply changed bodies with someone else. Is it still 2000 XX? Is Mega Man still trying to save the world? Right. That's real simple. Hmm. Hey, makes sense to me. Such things happen every day. If you watch uh, uh, movies, they do all the time. I took a closer look at the stranger, and only then I realized that it actually was me. It just wasn't today's me. Maybe the one from between my school and university day days. Well, at least that's something. I had orange hair back then. No, I didn't dye it. It was actually naturally orange. It was weird. There you go. That person in an extreme situation did fail to notice the elephant in the room after all. Was it your own elephant? Have you checked that to see if that changed? But the camp leader noticed it. At least that last night she told me off for addressing her without proper respect. Ah, screw that and her. Mm. Yeah, if you ever get thrown back in time, the first thing you want to do is get a drink. The irony is you are no longer old enough to drink. Mm. Legally, of course. I doubt my appearance uh, affects anything else. If I... If... <coughs> Excuse me. If the clock was not lying, breakfast was long over. Oh, well. I'll try to find something in the canteen. I have the keys. It worked out well yesterday with uh, Sylvia, didn't it? Those memories made me smile involuntarily. The sun was shining brightly outside. A light breeze was blowing by. A beautiful summer day. I had not felt so good in the morning for several years. It's actually noon, but okay. All problems were gone. Vanished into clouds. Well, you're a teenager again. Excuse me. No bills, no mortgage, no job. And you're surrounded by now, you realize it, age-appropriate women. You know I'm still going for the 25-year-old. Olga came out of nowhere. Oh, she's had a hat. Good morning, Simon. Morning. I smiled, doing my best not to show that. No matter what, my morning was indeed good. You're, uh, you only arrived yesterday, so I decided not to wake you, uh, but breakfast. Never mind, here, take this. It's dangerous to go alone. She handed me something wrapped in paper. Judging by the oil stains, there had to be, uh, had to be sandwiches. And, uh, oily sandwiches? Oh, oh, thank you. Now, go wash yourself. I was about to leave. Wait a second. I'll help. What's she doing? Olga quickly ran into the house and came out and shoved a small bag in my hands. Inside, I found a tooth. What? Do you just happen to have extra ones? And something else. I didn't look too closely. Condoms. A pioneer should always be clean and tidy with a rain cap. Wink, wink, she said. <laughs> Let me do your neckerchief properly. This is the first time yours is askew. You should probably do it yourself once you learn how to. Uh, do we have to? I'm going to wash myself now. You know, I'm going to take it off. Yeah, right. It could get hooked on the trap. It's fine. Later then. And don't forget about the lineup. 
Pencils, papers, drawing lines. You don't forget such things. What lineup? What do you mean, what lineup? Just that pouty phase of hers. She frowned, cutely. It's Monday today. Weird. By my approximation, it should have been Sunday. Then again, a shift in the day of the week is hardly the worst thing since I'm in the body of a teenager. Oh, sorry. I keep kicking. Hold on, hold on. How very professional of me. I keep kicking the XLR cable. That's why I keep hearing that noise. Then again, I sound very nasally today anyways. So. Oh, excuse me. And we're back. Usually we have lineups early in the morning before breakfast, but it's Monday today. So we're having it at 12 o'clock. Don't understand that logic, but whatever. Don't be late. All right, but where? At the square. Where else? I mean, not like they want them to draw more places. There we go. There's no reason to argue. I headed to the bathing place. Is it out in the public? What is this? There's no public shower. You just have to wash in your tidy whities Love this music. Everything's right with the world. You're now a teenager. Youth is yours again. Guess what? You now have a full set of hair again. Not balding anymore, hey. Plenty of sexy girls. Now your age. Oh, excuse me. I shouldn't sing in this voice. I know I could forget about. Uh, I know I could forget about separating showers and toilets. But at the sight of this uh, malfunctioning system of decay, decaying socialism, a funny turtle with a tin shell. Paul traps and a ceramic body. I felt sick. I'm not a squeamish person, but nevertheless, standing there, I realized that there was still some minimum level of hab, uh, troll comfort, which I found it troublesome to be without. Yeah, you know, even what? I can't imagine they had teenagers in the situation. I mean, sure, you're supposed to be a good socialist and not think about. Wait a minute. Do they? No, they should have been more open about sex since they weren't religious. I don't know. That's be interesting. Hmm. Anyways, all that aside, it's often like that. When you lose things that you thought was ordinary and common, you suddenly understand just how essential they were. Again, was it Europe? And some of the places didn't have actually toilet seats. They were just a hole in the ground. That was just weird. Hmm. Ah, screw this. As if I have any choice. The water was ice cold, but the music was relaxing. I'm still bobbing. Hey, you're in the Soviet past, but hey, at least you're white. That's good. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, that's another thing. I don't know how racism was in the Soviet Union during the same time, because I know how it was in the U.S., and that was a horrible time. Uh, well, I'm assuming 50s. I don't know when this was. I'm talking off topic. I'm drinking. Let's continue on. Maybe I should have mixed this with my medicate with my uh, cold medicine. While washing my hands, uh, while washing my hands was not an issue. Washing my face, my mouth became a big issue. Then again, you're. Mm -hmm. How do you wash that in such a public area? There were no toothpaste in uh, toothpaste in the bag which Olga gave me. I could brush my teeth without it, but there's a small round box wrapped in a towel. Tooth powder. What's that? Cute. One point for being somewhat somewhere in the past. I'd never actually heard of tooth powder. Mm. I washed myself quickly, also due to the ice cold water. Again, I just can't get over how chipper this music is. Somewhere was someone was coming quickly or like running towards me. I turned around to see. Dear God, that's actually quite sexy. I see it's Sylvia, dressed in a black tracksuit. How you doing, sexy? How you feeling today? Lovely Monday, isn't it? The girl would probably look good in anything. Sounds great. Probably better naked. Uh, buy from uniform, uh, even a spacesuit. Hey there. 
Oh, uh, I mean, uh, what's up? Good morning. <laughs> what's up? Even now, that's that's the future to her. The annoying past for us. Oh yeah, real smooth. I why did you? Uh, why didn't you come for breakfast? I uh, overslept. I said it as if I was proud about it. But uh, Olga gave me some sandwiches. Ah, great then. Don't forget about the lineup. Yeah, sure. As if I could. Right, I gotta run. Enjoy yourself. I saw her bounce away in the distance. I mean, run away in the distance. Wasn't staring. She waved goodbye to me and I and disappeared around the path's bend. I continue to listen to this music. I just imagine there's a speaker uh, behind a fourth wall behind us. Just having this, you know, cheery music play while you bathe. Oh, yeah. Because life is good and socialism is great. Mm -hmm. Mm. Anyways, looks like it's a couple of minutes lined up. Uh, I should quickly pass by my home and drop off the washing bag and eat some sandwiches and then off to the square. I swung the door open to the cab and rushed inside as if jumping into the last departing train. <laughs> it turned out not to be the best idea. Metal music was playing inside. Changing. I froze on the spot, trying not to breathe, trying to hide my erection. Finally, the camp leader noticed me. Simon? I looked away immediately. No. Have you heard of knocking? Now get out. Oh, Not even the typical bra panty, one arm over, the other one pushing away shot. Oh, well. They're no fun. Where's the good, honest tropes when you need them? Yeah, that was real clumsy. Although I did enjoy the sight. Well, you could have shared it. 